This is a film about a 33-day voyage to the famous Ross Sea in deepest Antarctica. The voyage started from Ushuaia, Argentina and ended in Bluff, New Zealand. The total distance sailed was 64,010 nautical miles or about 12,000 kilometers. In total, it took some 36 hours of flying and waiting around at airports to get to Ushuaia. However, there were interesting sights along the way which helped pass the time. Coming into Santiago de Chile, we passed over an impressive mines tailing dam that threatens local inhabitants. Although we were continuing on to Buenos Aires in San Diego, we were forced to get off the plane, pass through Chilean immigration before we were allowed to reboard the same plane to continue our flight to Buenos Aires. The flight over the Andes was beautiful. Unfortunately for the international traveler, Buenos Aires has separate international and domestic airports, which means that international travelers must change airports to fly to Ushuaia. The inter-airport transfer takes several hours, but on the plus side, one does get to see downtown Buenos Aires if transferring via bus. The early morning flight to Ushuaia offered some beautiful scenes due to the full moon being out and a pretty sunrise. The flight from Buenos Aires to Ushuaia covered 2,351 kilometers and lasted for three and a half hours, but there was lots of interesting sights, including planes flying past us and the plane's Brock Inspector in the clouds. The scenery was very beautiful as we came into land at Ushuaia, which is nestled at the foot of the snow-covered Marshall Mountains. The huge cruise ships in the sunlight added to the attraction of the scene. Ushuaia is the capital of the Tierra del Fuego province, which the Argentines claim includes the Falkland Islands belonging to Britain. Ushuaia's harbour has a number of interesting boats, including the abandoned tug St. Christopher. Ushuaia proudly touts itself as the end of the world, although the Chilean town of Porto Williams is further south. As Ushuaia claims to be the capital of the Falkland Islands, or Malvinas as they call them, there are many Falkland Islands war memorials and murals scattered around the city. During the 1982 Falkland Islands War, the Argentinian cruiser General Belgrano sailed from Ushuaia and was subsequently sunk by a British submarine. The Ushuaia naval base has seen the loss of other warships which are memorialized as well. Ushuaia is a city of murals, many of which are well done and very colorful. The area's indigenous people, known as the Yigan, were largely wiped out following the arrival of settlers. However, their memory lives on in several murals around town.
From 1896 until 1947, Ushuaia was the home to a prison whose prisoners served as forced settlers who built many of the early buildings in the city. Apparently assisting the police was a feral dog who enjoyed chasing cars. <laughs> If you find yourself in Ushuaia and are willing to be spontaneous, it is possible to get a heavily discounted last-minute Antarctic cruise. Due to its location on the Beagle Channel on the tip of South America, Ushuaia serves as the major port for tourist ships heading to Antarctica. <laughs> It was fascinating to watch a gull dropping mussels on the rocks in order to break the shells. Ushuaia's lifeblood is tourism, although its cruise terminal is just a pier, with space for two medium-sized cruise ships plus a couple of smaller ones, with some 36 Arctic-bound ships staging annually out of Ushuaia during the austral summer, plus seven other visiting ships. Ushuaia has about 300 cruise ship visits during the austral summer. It is expensive to dock at the pier in Ushuaia, so most Arctic-bound ships just spend long enough at the pier to offload passengers, refuel and reprovision, and then onboard new passengers before they head on out back to Antarctica. The MS Expedition came in to dock at the pier. We had twice voyaged to Antarctica on this ship over the years. The Aero Club Ushuaia, located on an old naval air station, is the center of sightseeing flights around the Ushuaia area. Both light aircraft and helicopters were coming and going on a regular basis. At the aerodrome is a replica of the Henkel HD-24 seaplane named Tsingtao that German explorer Gunther Pruschau used on a 1927-1928 expedition to the southern tip of South America. Unfortunately, this faithful replica was left outside and is now much damaged. The old Argentine motor torpedo boat mounted on the shore struck a very impressive pose. This Higgins-class torpedo boat was built in the United States for service in the Pacific during World War II, before being passed on to the Argentine Navy. With the departure of the Coral Princess, the MV Artelius, our ship for our voyage to the Ross Sea, arrived to dock at the pier.
Amphiortelius was built in 1989 in Poland as a research vessel for the Russian Academy of Science and was named Marina Sveteva. In 2011, she was sold and reflagged as a Dutch ship and renamed Ortelius. The ship has been fitted out as a 125 passenger vessel. Ortelius is 91 meters long, about 18 meters wide, and has a maximum draft of about 6 meters with an ice strength rating of UL1 A1, a top speed of 13 knots, and has one diesel engine generating 4300 horsepower. The Ortelius's ice strength rating of UL1 A1 means that she can operate in modest ice conditions consisting of solid one-year sea ice and loose multi-year pack ice without icebreaker assistance. Hence, she can safely sail through the summer sea ice routinely encountered on a voyage to the Ross Sea. With the mandatory lifeboat drill over, the final lines were cast off and we set sail from Ushuaia's Pier down the Beagle Channel to the Chilean town of Porto Williams where we would pick up three Chilean helicopters. These helicopters would allow us to land in inaccessible areas during our voyage. We made the short trip down the Beagle Channel to Porto Williams to rendezvous with our helicopters. The Beagle Channel was alive with seabirds, including shags, albatrosses, and Magellanic penguins. We were supposed to make a brief stop at Porto Williams to embark the three Chilean helicopters. However, bad weather in the mountains between Ponta Arenas and Porto Williams prevented the helicopters from arriving for 36 hours. During this 36 hour delay, we watched planes, ships and ferries coming and going. Porto Williams, Chile is a town of some 2,900 people and serves as a base for Chile to assert its sovereignty around Cape Horn and to support its Antarctic bases. Chilean officials, including a pilot, came on board whilst we waited for the helicopters. There were many seabirds nesting on a spit near Porto Williams, but unfortunately a group of people decided that they had to walk right through rather than around the nesting birds. The Yagan Ferry makes the 561 kilometer voyage from Punta Arenas to Porto Williams in about 32 hours, bringing supplies to the town. The first two helicopters to land on board had their rotor blades removed so that they could be stowed in the hangar. The third helicopter was strapped on on the deck behind the hangar and wrapped up in its protective cover as we finally hoisted anchor and set sail down the Beagle Channel towards the Drake Passage. The Magellanic Penguin is a medium-sized South American penguin that was named after the Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan, who spotted the birds in 1520. We sailed past the wreck of the MV Logos that remained stuck on the rocks that it hit in the Beagle Channel in 1988. After disembarking the channel pilot, we headed out across the Drake Passage, which thankfully was mostly calm.
The highlights of the Drake Passage crossing were the glorious sunsets and watching Cape Petrels flit about the waves alongside the ship. Cape Petrels reveled in flying at wave top level in the lee of the ship, dodging both the waves and the ocean spray. Nearing the coastline of the Antarctic Peninsula at sunset, we started to see huge icebergs taking on a beautiful reddish hue. The sight of the MS Silver Cloud cruise ship returning from the Antarctic Peninsula when set against the setting sun was very beautiful, but the following scene of the huge iceberg passing by at sunset was even more beautiful. In part two, we sail south along the Antarctic Peninsula, transiting through the famous Lemaire Channel and visiting the Ukrainian Vernansky Station. We then make an amazing Zodiac cruise amongst the whales feeding in the waters of the Argentine Islands. Take me somewhere now.